This was an impromptu revival night, amen? I just thought we're going to call a meeting where we come together and we just worship and pray together, amen? Um, we just came back from Kenya. As my wife said, come on, give the Lord a praise for that, amen? <laughs> and um, Kenya was powerful. Kenya was amazing, amen? But Kenya was also alarming, amen? And you know what's alarming? Is that we are drifting further and further away as a nation from the Lord, amen? I was watching the coronation from Kenya, and I saw how King Charles, King Charles, amen? When it came to the part where you had to swear on the Bible, you saw his face going funny, amen? <laughs> you saw him shivering and smirking, he's like, oh, the Bible, no, do you know? Because he wants to be be liberal he wants to be inclusive you know he wants to be that king that modern king yeah. praise God and you know there's been many kings in the bible that want to be a modern king do you know in the past when you look at the book when you go through kings you go through judges you look at how the bible talks about many kings were following traditions of the heathen nations of their time but it was a oh, not many kings were following the traditions of the heritage of the lord god amen and the Bible talks about Asa in the Bible. Asa was eight years old, but he was loyal to the things of God. Amen. And I just believe that God is raising up a royal generation within a generation that are going to be loyal to the things of God. Amen. There's a remnant rising that are loyal to the things of Jesus. Amen. And we may have a king on the throne who may not be iffy and shaky about Jesus, but we have a generation within a generation that know there is a living and true God that know the ways of the Lord that will not bow their knees to bow but will stay true to the confession on, uh, of the teachings of Jesus Christ amen so we are living in times amen where, where, where not only do the people of God need revival but the nation needs revival you know and you know is the nation dead because for something to be revived it has to be what come back to life again but is the nation dead? Amen. How do you know something's alive? And how do you know it's dead? Amen. You know, we got to look at the current temperature. You know, when they check you, if you're alive, they check your pulse, check your temperature. What is the temperature of the church in the UK? What is the temperature of us as believers? You know, and as I was sitting here thinking about what to share, um, the scripture came to me. Go with me to Acts chapter 3. Um, verse 19 and 20, if you're there. Acts chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. Praise God. Caribou to all my Kenyan friends watching. <laughs> That's one word we learned out there, amen? Caribou. And jambo, jambo. We're looking at Acts chapter 3, verse 19. And I love this scripture, amen, but it's a very encouraging word it says to us, amen, in order, in order to find life, in order to be revived, in order to build up your pulse, in order to grow in God, amen. Are we there? If you're there, say praise the Lord. If you're not, say help me God. Help you God. Okay, I'll give you guys time, amen. Acts chapter 3 Verse 19, I'm going to be very quick with you tonight because we're going to be here tomorrow night. We'll be on time. We're going to really hit the ground running. I'm going to call some more people down. We'll have the full band and everything and we're going to have a powerful time. Amen. Right. So Acts 3, 19 says, Repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time of restoring all things about which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. And I love that scripture. And at first it says, um, and the, the, point, the point that really gets, the part of the scripture I really like is times, times of refreshing. Times of refreshing. There's a time when you're not really at your best. And there's a time when you're not really dead. You just need a refreshing. Praise God. Amen. And you see, what is it to be refreshed? It means to be made renew again. Or, or, to, or to be, or to be um, uh, how can I put it? How to be, to be, to be uh, energized again. 
or to be given strength again or to be given zeal again or to be given vigor again it means that you had something but it went dry you was something but it was kind of but you lost it something happened with the battery power in you drained down but God says there's a time of refreshing in the presence of the Lord praise God and sometimes before you go, go to refreshing, we have to acknowledge repentance. And repentance is not always from sin. Because repentance is, comes from a word, I think it's misio in the Greek, amen? It means the change of mind, amen? Renouncing, I heard someone preach about this, renouncing is, is, is coming away from something. But repentance is acknowledging and turning, Amen? acknowledging and turning and we always think about repenting from sin but it's not every time you're in disobedience there's times you're in disillusion we're not in disobedience but we're in disillusion there's times in your life that you don't you're not in sin but you're not in faith you're not in God you're not in hope you're not in joy you're not in peace I'm not in sin but I'm not in the right place and when I'm in that place I don't feel good about myself I know you guys have all been there I've been there disillusionment I'm disillusioned about where I'm going in God I'm disillusioned about my walk in God I just don't feel the same way I felt about Jesus the way when I first got saved because what happens when you go through life is that you have to now um, exp exp expend energy and expend resources and, and holding on to God and trusting God. And there's a time when God says you need a refreshing. Yes, yes, yes. You need a refreshing. Praise God. And you see what happens to us, we're always going through the motions. One thing I noticed about Kenya, they're very slow, amen? Amen. Oh my gosh, I realize how fast we are in the UK. The pace, especially in London. In Kenya, my gosh, you order something and I saw the person standing there, twisting their neck, doing this. I wanted to get out of my car and say, hurry up! <laughs> Until I realized I got nowhere to go because I'm in a foreign country. <laughs> but I realized, God said to me, look at the pace you move at. The pace you move at is so quick all the time. Do you ever get time to be refreshed in the presence of the Lord? Do you understand that you need to focus sometimes, put away some time, put away a moment to be refreshed in the presence of the Lord? Do you understand that you cannot be continue doing the patterns and the routines? You must make a secret place. You must make a time. You must make a, a moment where you can come into God's presence and say, God, refresh me, refill me, renew me, repower me. Help me again, God. Build me again, God. I need to be refreshed in the presence of God. And you see, what we do a lot of the time is that we we always working. Our mind is always working. Our, our spirit is always working. Even when we come to church, you know, I thought to myself, God, I just want to sit here. And as I was, my wife was sitting here, she was ministering, I felt the refreshing. Praise God. You see, sometimes we've got to learn what it is to sit in the presence of God. To sit in the presence. Do you know what happened in the coronation in, in the weekend? They was in the presence of royalty. Everyone was very majestic. Everyone was very um, 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 careful. There was a lot of protocol. There were pageantry. I loved it. Amen. I love that kind of stuff. Amen. And I was watching it and they were sitting there. Amen. And it was somber moments. There was moments. When you're in somebody's presence and you're particular to be in the pre present in the presence of somebody, you can capture moments. So what happens? Sometimes God says to you, my son and my daughter, I just want to get you still before me. Amen. It says, be still still and see the salvation of the Lord but sometimes we're so busy all the time in our mind in our feelings and emotions that when God's telling you to be still and watch me work we're too busy to be still for God's answers 
And it causes a continual state of anxiety and worry and pressure. And you're living in this place of worry, anxiety and pressure. And you don't know how to get out of it. And you're saying, God, I just don't feel. I just don't feel. But God says, be still and you shall see the salvation of the Lord. And as believers, we don't know how to be still. We're scared to be still. I tell you, as a Londoner, I'm scared to be still. I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid. I'm always thinking I've got to do something. Time. Time is going. Time is... But God says, this is it. You need the refreshing that comes from the stillness. You need the refreshing. Praise God. I remember when I was doing my examinations. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's like 20 years ago now. (laughs) Getting old. (laughs) Praise God. I was exa- doing my exams and I was so full of anxiety. I was so full of fear because I knew that I hadn't studied and I was in trouble. And we paid three and a half grand per year just for the room. And the, the course fees were nine grand. I said, oh my gosh. Ah! <laughs> and God said to me, be still. And it was the last thing I wanted to do. He told me, be still, sit down and just breathe. And I sat down. <sighs> That's how I was at the beginning. <laughs> Have you seen one of those those um those those um those yeah, they, I think it's shamans that you know from the Indian they they breathe a certain way, tribal breathing techniques. And I was like that. And the God says, "Don't be, don't act weird. Just breathe." <laughs> and so I started to breathe and just be like, "Yes, Lord." And then it was whirling around in my head. You're in trouble, you're in trouble. But suddenly, I heard the voice saying, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And then the in trouble went from, it's okay, you're going to be fine. And then I sat down there, and I just didn't even know how long I was sitting down there after a while, because I started feeling the presence. You know, some people can be in the room, but you don't know they're there you got to be still to acknowledge his presence. God was getting me to say, no, the devil was getting you too wound up. You know the, 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 the phrase wound up? When you're wound up, it means you're like this. And that's how some of our spirits are. And that's why we can't really receive or capture what God wants to say to us. Because we're wound up. We may look cool on the outside like Marie, but inside we're wound up. And God says, no. Remember this, you know, it is not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. When you be still in the presence, God reminds you of his presence. Let me say that again. When you be still in the presence, God reminds you of his presence. This works because of me. This is going to work out because of me. You're going to be okay because of me. I've got you in my hands. You don't have to do this by your own effort. You don't have to make things work. You don't have to get everything in order altogether. This works because of me. Praise God. And the refreshing comes from acknowledging the repentance. That's why it says repent. That's why verse 19 says repent. Because you're in a place where you're making yourself God instead of relying on God. And how many times are we relying on, on, on us to do something, forgetting it's him that empowers us to do it? It's, if, we don't, it's not, if, we don't, if he doesn't do it, it can't be done. And so many times we're in that place where like, I've got to change myself. I've got to be better for the Lord. I know I should be doing, getting, be better. I know I should be in this. But in the presence, God reminds you, you have no power of your own. And the thing that what the devil does, he causes us to get so in this place where we're wound up and we're trying to fix ourselves. We're like, no, Holy Spirit, you stay here. I'm going to be right for you. I'm going to come back when I'm right. Stay over there, Holy Spirit trying to fix yourself fix myself let me get it right i'm not ready for you holy spirit yet i'm just gonna fix myself okay holy spirit how do you think and then he says no you're not right 
And I'm like, but, but look, look, I look okay. I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm hanging on. I'm doing my 30 minutes of prayer. I'm doing my 10 minutes of Bible study. I'm watching two TD Jake sevens per day. I'm doing the things. And he's like, no, you don't get it. This is not by works. This is not by works. You need my presence to cleanse you. <laughs> to heal you of your self-effort. <laughs> Do you know? And it's horrible. It's a horrible balance because I tell you something. I'm, a, I'm an independent woman. Amen? You may not look like one, but I am. Amen? <laughs> Come on, the ladies, independent, throw your hands up at me. <laughs> and that's what it is. This life teaches you if you're not independent, if you're not doing it for yourself, then who's going to do it? But God is saying, no. Sometimes sit down. Learn how to work with me. Refreshing comes from learning how to work. Do you know? When the presence of God is on you and refreshes you, he partners with you in the work. So the work, your work is not your work. Your work is both of your work. The Father will show you how to run your business, how to study, how to find a job, how to do something. God wants partnership with us. He says, right, before you go ahead, let's talk about it. Do you know what a relationship is? It's communication. Number one thing is communication. <laughs> You've got to talk about stuff. You've got to say to yourself, okay, how do we want to do this together? How do we want to build this together? You know, and that's what the Holy Spirit is saying. The Holy Spirit says, I want to be a part of your life, not just parked on the side of it. I want to be a part of it. Let's build you together. In fact, let's rebuild you together. Let's revive you together. And sometimes when the Holy Spirit wants to refresh you, the Holy Spirit says to you, right, no church, I want you to go on a three-week holiday. But some of you have to come to church here. Praise God. <laughs> but sometimes the Holy Spirit tells you things to do to get you in a place of stillness. Because it says, I can see, I live on the inside of you. I see the turmoil or the, uh, the feeling inside of you. Where you just not quite yourself. I see that on the inside of you. And I need to give you a particular answer that solves you, that helps you. And it's not going to come by more Christian works. It's not going to come by more Christian works. Do you know, I'm very happy today. We did, the keyboardist didn't come or the drummer didn't come. I'm very happy for that. Because you know why? These are all distractions sometimes to the presence. But when there's a nice melody and you're singing along, it's like a karaoke and we're singing along and we're just enjoying and we're shouting. We, but we haven't tapped in to the presence. We haven't said, Jesus, you speak to me. You talk to me. Refreshing. Refreshing doesn't mean um, complete changing of your clothes or complete changing of your garments or complete changing who you are. Refreshing means that I'm sprucing you up. The parts that are tired, we're just replenishing it, replenishing it. Do you know? I've been enough times, I've got sisters, I've got mums, I've got aunties, I know a lot of ladies here in the room. You know how it is when you go to the toilet and you get refreshed. You see, what happens in that process? You're taking time to look at every part of you, to check it, to analyze it, to kind of get it in order, isn't it? That's what's happening. And you're passing, you're like, oh, God, there's a stain there. Oh. <laughs> you know? And you're looking at you. And that's what the Holy Spirit does in the refreshing process. The Holy Spirit says to you, right, we're going to sort a couple of things out. Right, firstly, your joy, your joy factor. Your joy is being linked to your works. Your joy should always be linked to God. Fix that. Firstly, okay, we're going to sort out your, your, your temperament. You've been a bit, uh, a bit tasty recently. We need to get that in order. <laughs> then we're going to sort out your, 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 your vision. You've been seeing things so short-sightedly. Don't you know that God's got a massive plan for your life? You've forgotten Jeremiah 29 verse 11. We're going to just encourage you in that. 
Praise God. Then the Lord says, okay, we're going to sort out your timekeeping because, you know, you've just been all over the place. And that refreshing is almost like an MOT in your spirit. See, every believer needs times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. The car needs an MOT every year. The car needs servicing every year. Or your car acts like my car. My car has an oil light on it all the time now because I didn't take it for servicing. And a lot of the time, we don't take our spiritual man for servicing. And we have lights. We have warning lights on us. We have error lights on us. We have all kinds of things. And people see us and say, are you okay? And you say, yeah, I'm fine. But you're not okay. Because you need a time of refreshing. God needs to refresh you. Refresh you because you've been worn out. You've been used. You've been battered. You know, the devil's been coming after us hard. Hard, 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 hard. Sometimes it's not even your fault. It's the devil. Don't blame yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Don't always be battering yourself. It's re- you sometimes just need a refreshing. You're in a battle. You're in a battle. Hard. Life is hard. You know, I was telling some of the guys here. Thank you so much. I was telling some of the guys in Kenya. Oh, they, they work by shillings. It's kind of nice because we used to have shillings. Now we have pounds, isn't it? So, and pennies and stuff. And they work by shillings still. And it's kind of like retro. And I was saying to them, look, look if you live in London, you need an average of around about two to three thousand pounds a month to live nowadays. It's expensive. And plus you have to be... Plus, the working hours are long and the days are hard and there's times it's very difficult. What I really need is I don't need, and my mind can just be so fixed in a moment, a place of just work, work, structure, 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 that I need to repent my mind to say, I need refreshing. I need refreshing. And it's your job to say to yourself, man, I need to repent from how I'm living. I'm not making time for refreshing. When was the last time you had a refreshing moment of the Lord? Refreshing. You feel like the weight has been lifted. The cares are gone. Long time. You you see, every time we come into God's presence, we're supposed to have refreshing moments. Because the Bible says refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. So if the Lord is present in our meetings, then why are we not feeling refreshed? You see, God can be present in the meeting, but you're not ready to be present with the Lord. We're not ready. We're in that place where we're just going through the motions of the meetings. And rather than having an encounter, we're having an experience. An experience is different from an encounter. An experience is like a feeling or an emotion. And so you feel great in it, like a drug. You're like a drug. People take drugs. They're like, feel great. Oh, I'm doing a drug. And when it wears off, oh, I've got to go back for that drug again. Because they never allowed their spirit man to come into the realm of encounter. When it's an experience, it's a feeling that comes on you. When it's an encounter, it's something that provokes you and changes you. This is why we're doing these revival nights. Because God said to me, you need to have an encounter. We need an encounter again. Do you know what changed Saul on the road to Damascus? Encounter. Do you know what changed Moses in the, in the, in the desert with the Midianites? Encounter. Do you know what changed um, 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 Philip and changed Peter or Simon Peter? Encounter. Every time you have an encounter with the presence of God or God is present, there is always a change in your spirit. So you have to repent from it being an experience-led Christian into be one longing and looking for encounter. God, look for encounter. I want you, Jesus. That's why you've got to repent from that. You've got to repent from this feeling, emotional Christian. Looking, for, We've got to start looking and saying, God, I want to experience you, encounter you. You know the thing about experience? Experience is waiting. Encounter is, is seeking. When I want to encounter something, I'm seeking for the encounter. I'm seeking for him. I'm seeking for the prayer. I'm being intentionally still to say, God, I want you. Jesus, I want you. Come. 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 The music just helps me get in the mood. We're in your presence. We're in your presence. 
Shekinah glory come down. Shekinah glory come down. And when that song is going on, I'm just looking and saying, Father, just come, come. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory come. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory come. And as the song is playing, you're in that place where you're like, God, I just need you. I'm calling for you. You see, you've got to posture your spirit to say, God, we need you. I want you, God. Just, just speak to me, God. Just speak to me, God. Just talk to me, God. I'm seeking for you. Your spirit man says that. Your spirit man needs to say that. And we've got to repent from saying, God, touch me. And you're here waiting like a bus stop. And your spirit man is just sitting there, waiting. And then when you hear the right key, the right chord, the right drums, suddenly you think it's the presence. But you've just encountered an ex spiritual experience. You just, so you just had a, spirit, a spiritual experience. You didn't have an encounter. But encounter is deliberate. Encounter recognizes the presence. And suddenly you feel him say, I'm here with you. <laughs> okay, God, we've got a connection. Woo! Okay, God, what's next? Oh, and then he starts ministering to your spirit. Do you know something that happened to me? I want to close with this because I don't want to be too long today. I just want to prime us for tomorrow. But you know what God said to me? Um, I had a vision. When I was 21 years old, I, had a, I was in a prayer meeting. And um, we, were, um, we used to pray with my, with my prophet. We used to pray Tuesdays from 8 to 10. And I'm going to start doing that here again, I think, you know, because it's powerful. And we used to just have intense warfare prayer. You come in, you're just praying for two hours straight in tongues. There's no real prayer point. You're just coming and you are just pursuing and encountering God. That's what it was. The whole, the whole night was, like, was set up that we're not going to have a real leader. We're going to have someone praying on the mic. But, you know, we just, all of us are just going to walk around praying. In fact, there was no mic sometimes. There was no mic. You just came in there and you prayed. It was a time of prayer. And it was a time for you to find God. That's what it was. And so you'll see all the leaders of the church will be praying in a corner. Nobody was interested in any kind of music. We just wanted to, you could sing, you could do anything. We were just looking for encounter. And I remember coming in that day and I was like, I need you, God. I need you, God. Because I, I, I was in a situation where, where it was difficult for me to worship at home. And I was like, I need you, God. I need you, God. I remember, I need you, God. And I was praying like that. I need you. I need you. Father, come. I was saying, come, come. Come, 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 Father, come. That's all I was saying. Come, 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 Father, come, please, God. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. And I remember the intensity inside of me. My spirit was matching my flesh, and there was so much intensity in me that suddenly whoosh, I was gone. And then I was in this place suddenly. And I remember seeing the sea, seeing the beach. And I remember there was a white light next to me. I couldn't look over to it. And then we're walking now. And, and we're talking like this, we're talking, but no words are coming out of my mouth. It's like the words are coming from my stomach to the light stomach. And we're talking, and we're talking. And then suddenly, I felt this refreshing in my flesh. I felt this peace in my flesh. I felt this, this kind of like, it just came over me. It just came over me. And then, the convert, and then I was like, at the end of it, I can feel words coming out of me. And I can feel words coming out of the being into me. But I didn't know what we were saying. I was just, at the end of it, I was like, yes, Lord, I get it. And, and then it was like, and it was like, good. And then it sent me back. And then I woke up out of the vision that, and I'm like this. I look around and everybody's sitting on the chairs quietly. Because we had, at the end of it, we usually have a Bible. We have a little bit of a, of a, um, a we read the Bible a little bit. And I was like this. And I said, and I opened my eyes, and everyone was just, was just. I was standing like this here. They were all sitting, literally, on how you guys there are. And I was like, what happened? And my friend said to me, you was gone. We, we tried to wake you up, but we couldn't. I said, how long? How long was I like that in that trance? They said you were there for forty-five minutes like that. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> 
<laughs> 45 minutes. And that was Jesus speaking to me. That was Jesus I had an encounter with. I had pu- I pushed past. A, a le- now, let me tell you something. When you get into that kind of experience or encounter with God, you don't want anything else again. Oh. <laughs> you know? You realize it's available. You don't want anything else again. It radically changed my prayer life. It radically changed my personal life with God because I realized every time I come into the presence, I want that again. And I've had that a couple of times afterwards where I've just been like, there and I'm there. And I, I think it's two minutes have gone past. It's an hour. <laughs> and Jesus has just downloaded into me visions and dreams and all these kind of things and directions. And he said to me, every time you need me, I'm in that place. I'm in that place of refreshing. In fact, the only time I've ever made mistakes is when I don't live from that place. You're meant to live from the place of refreshing. You're meant to live from there. And that comes from earnest desire. That's where the Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. It's effectual because it's fervent. It's hungry. It's desperate. I need you, God. I need you, God. But guess what? When you think you've got it all together, you're not going to pray like that. When you, when you think that realm is not available, you're not going to pray like that. When you think that you don't need God as much as you do, you can handle it yourself, you're not going to pray like that. You only pray like that when you repent from your own ways and you can enter into the time of refreshing. Do you know, that season entered the first supernatural phase of my ministry because God started working for me from signs and wonders from that moment. Signs and wonders. I remember traveling as a young missionary growing up to Ghana, and there was signs and wonders. I walked through the villages. I was, I was knocking on people's doors. Who needs healing? Who needs healing? Who needs healing? People come out, and I lay hands, and I say, how do you feel now? And I didn't wait for the answer. I knew they were healed. Miracles, miracles, signs and wonders. There's even one miracle we have. We went to the hospital. The boy wasn't paralyzed for weeks. I said, send me to the boy. I was so full of the anointing. Send me to the boy. <laughs> and so I went to the boy, laid hands on him. You can see, the, you remember that video, Cav? And you see me get up. He goes, the Holy Spirit is beating me. The Holy Spirit is beating me. And he's feeling the power of God. And I knew he would experience the power of God because I had an encounter. I knew. So here's the thing about growing and being mature in God. Here's the thing about growing. You've got to know when you're not really alive and you're not really dead. And when you're someone who's conscious of that, you will take yourself to your nearest church or nearest prayer meeting, anything you can do, and you will come in and look for encounter. Praise God. You know, you would come in and say, I need the presence of God. When I was a, a young Christian growing up in the Lord, I used to go to churches. I don't care if it was a Catholic church, Anglican church, any church I could find in my lunch break. And I was just going there. I don't care who sees me. I'm saying, God, I need you. I need you. I need you. And the God taught me that desperation always brings a deliverance. Desperation brings deliverance. And some of us, what we do is we sit and we talk to our demons and we partner with them and we, we start having conversations like, do you want a cup of tea? I want a cup of tea. How do you put and you're giving and you and you guys are talking together and it's making you feel depressed, making you feel heavy. And then you don't ever be desperate to the God that you of, of your deliverance to be able to get rid of that thing to get you into a new level with him. I left that prayer meeting, which I told you about. Just light on the cloud. I just remember just knowing I had every answer. I don't know what happened. Nothing changed physically for me. But I was refreshed in the presence of the Lord. We're going to do something, you know. I want Jeffro. Jeffro, put on that music. Do you know? Put on that music here. Just a little bit. Put that music on. Yeah. And I want you just now to just really press into God. I want you to press into God and just be serious with this moment because when you make a moment serious you get this you get you get the attention of God because God likes to enter into serious moments when you choose to make this moment intentional you're saying God I need you 
I need you. I don't care how I look, but I know, I acknowledge, I repent from anything that tells me that I can make it by myself, that I can do it by myself, that I am strong by myself, that I am, I, I've, got, I've got it all together myself. I'm going to put aside my pride. I don't have it together, God. I'm not right, God. I need a feeling, God. I need a touch, God. I need you to speak to me, God. And I'm desperate and I'm hungry for you. And if you need to walk around this place, walk around. If you need to lay on the floor, prostrate, lay on the floor. If you need to get on your knees, but whatever you need to do is the moment you need to do it. Not in a religious way, but you need to open up your spirit and say, God, I need you now. I need you now. Father, we need you now. Father, we call to you now. Father, we cry to you now. Father, we say, come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord, into our midst. Father, we say, oh God, Lord, that if you cannot be with us, if you do not refresh us, we can never be refreshed. We can never be helped, oh God. Lord, I, I, I admit, oh God, I am nothing without you. I am nothing without you, God. Lord, without your love, without your sustaining grace, I fail and I fail as a leader and I fail as everything, as a father. Father, as a husband, as everything in my life, God, I know, Lord, and I know, God, that without you, oh God, I am nothing, oh God. I am not anything, oh God, of my own thing. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Come on, some of us need to cry out to him. This is the moment you can make this moment your time of encounter. Lord, call, call out to him. Call out to him. Call out to him. Times of refreshing are in the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing are in the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing are in the presence of the Lord. Times of healing are in the presence of the Lord. Times of restoration are in the presence of the Lord. Lord, we need you, oh God. I need you, oh God, for my up and coming mission trips. I need you, oh God, to run this ministry. I need you, oh God, Father, to, to run my life, oh God. I need you as my strength, oh God. I don't need willpower. I need your power. I don't need, Father, of my own power. I need your power. I need you, oh God, Lord. I cry for you, God. I cry for you, God. I live for you, God. God, come, 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 come. We say, come, Lord Jesus. We say, come, Lord Jesus. We say, come. We say, come. We say, come. We say, come. We say, come, Lord. Come, Lord. Refresh your people tonight. That's why we came. You said you only need two or three. You only need two or three. You only need two or three of us that really, really want you that really really need you that really are hungry for you God release your fire again in us release your presence in us come on release your presence in us come on you need to speak from where you're at speak from where you're at wherever you're at if you're hurting in your heart speak from that place if you're weary in your spirit speak from that place say God I need you I need your solution I need your answers I need your peace I need your joy I need your encouragement God I need you God I need you Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, I can feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah, I decrease so you can increase, my Father. I decrease so you can increase. I lay low so you can rise high, God. I am nothing without you, God. I am nothing without you, God. I am thy servant. I am your servant, Lord. Speak, Lord, your servant listeneth. Speak, Lord, your servant listeneth, oh God, Father. Lord, you are majestic. You are holy. You are wonderful. You are mag magnificent, God, Father. I thank you, God. I thank you, oh God, Father. There is none like you, God. There is none like you, God, Father. Oh, 
all the adoration, yes, Lord. All the praise, all the joy, all everything comes from you, God. We surrender in this moment, God. We surrender and we repent, oh God, from any pride, any spiritual pride, any pride of the heart, anything, oh God, that we have missed, anything that we're doing that is not of you, anywhere we're living that's not of you. We repent, oh God, from any disillusionment that entered into our spirit, God. Where, Father, right now we've not seen you the right way. We've not honored you the right way. We've not, exp- we've not, we're not, we're not understanding you the right way, Father. Come, God. Come, God. Come, God. Come, God. Come, God. Come, God. Come, Holy Spirit. 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 Feel your people. 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 Feel your people, 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 feel your people. Feel your people, oh, there is more you require of us. There is more you want from us. Oh, feel your people. Ramasina, na na na, ramasina, na 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 na. Ura ma 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 shi ni 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 ma ma si ke ni 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 ya na ma 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 ra ma si ke ya na 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 ya na ma si ra ma 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 si ke ni 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 ya na ma su ku ra ma 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 si ke ni 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 ya ka ya na ma 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 si ke ni 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 ya ka ya na ma 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 si ke ni 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 Ura ma 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 shike ya na ma 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 ura ma 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 kasike karababa ya karababa shikurabaka. Come on, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, "Desperation is your door to deliverance. Desperation is your door to deliverance. Come on, be desperate. Come on, some things won't change in your life without you saying, God, 'God, I'm desperate. I'm desperate like a person who's lived in the desert who just wants water.' Oh, come on, what sound would you make if you were desperate?" How do you have some of us? We're so we've been so composed by the devil, been so controlled by the devil. We forgot what it's like to be desperate. We forgot what it's like to be hungry. We forgot what it's like to say, God, I cannot do this. I need you to live. I need you to breathe. I need you, Lord. I need you, God. I'm not afraid, oh God, to be desperate, God. I'm not afraid to lift up my hands and say, God, I'm desperate for you. I'm hungry for you, God. I need you, Jesus. I need a turnaround. I need a deliverance. I need a breakthrough. I need you, oh God, Father, in my life, oh God, to do the what you do, oh God. I need you, oh God, Father, in every area, oh God, Father. Father, without you, oh God, Father, I cannot make it happen. I cannot do it again, oh God, Father. Father, we need you, oh God. I cry aloud and I spend not God. I say yes, Lord, to your way. Yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord God. Father, this is not a meeting for me, God. This is my Father, me calling you, saying, Lord, I want you. I want you, Holy Spirit. I want you, Jesus. I want you, Father. I want you, my King. I need you, my King. I'm calling you, Father. I call you to be the head of this church. I call you to be the head of this house. I call you, oh God, to be the head of this ministry. I say, you take your place. I've resigned from the head, oh God. I say, you you're the head God. You're the head God. You lead us, oh God. 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 Lead us, oh God, Father. Lead us, oh God, Father. Heal us, oh God, Father. 
bring us back to ourselves, oh God, Father, where we've left ourselves, oh God, where we've left our joy, where we've left your peace, where we've left your, left your mind, oh God, where we've done things our own way. We repent. I repent, oh God, Father. I'm sorry, oh God, for my own way. I'm sorry, oh God, Father, where I've let you be last in my decision-making process, where I've left you out of my decision-making, where I don't be aware of your presence, where I live how in any way we not knowing your presence, oh God. Lord, we're sorry, God. We're humble, humbly coming before you, God, Father, saying, fill us again. Refresh us again. Refresh us again. Refresh us again. Refresh us. Refresh us, Holy Spirit. Refresh us. Come. Come. Come.